Well, howdy guys and gals, welcome back to The Social Regressive. The biggest request that I have had while testing 350 Legend is to use Lehigh's bullets. These do not function like normal. You can see they don't look like your average bullet at all. Uh, these rely on some pretty different dynamics in order to uh, get the job done. And from what we've seen in the past with other loads, these do work really well. So normally with a spire point or a hollow point, you're relying on that lead at the tip or inside the cone there to expand out. You get the jacket that expands out. It makes the profile of the bullet as it's cutting through, it makes it larger. And it just kind of creates this big shock wave as it cuts and expands and makes a big mess inside the gel. This is a little bit different. It kind of has the cutting surface just right into the face of it and it pushes the gel out to create its own uh, shock wave in these weird little channels that you see cut into the bullet. And in some other loads that you might have seen in the past, maybe with some other channels, these have performed really well. So we're gonna see how these do for us. Now this is some pretty shocking stuff. Uh, I, I released a video a while back showing how precise these could be. Uh, with one of these bullets, I got the most precise group that I've shot with 350 Legend yet. And uh, we're talking about, about an eighth of an inch, I think. Uh, in a three shot group. So we're gonna see how these group up today. Hopefully I nailed the recipe just right. And uh, we're gonna have another load, this one with the, uh, the lighter, the 90 grain bullet. We're gonna test both of them today, but that lighter bullet is actually leaving the, the muzzle of this, right, this little carbine right here, only a 16 inch barrel. It's gonna be coming out at about 3,055 feet per second. So it is gonna be absolutely screaming. Uh, it's just mind boggling, over 3,000 feet per second with a bullet like that. The rifle we're gonna be using today is CMMG's excellent Resolute Carbine. I've been using this for all the tests. And then I have the US Optics TS6X up top here. Great little scope. This is a first focal plane reticle. It has a really nice reticle that allows you to make adjustments for drop and windage and it illuminates in the center as well. So it's really good for CQB and it's good for some uh, longer distances. So if you are trying to outfit a, a carbine right now or a rifle, uh, for especially for defensive use, I think this is a really good way to go. You might check this guy out. All right, now as usual, we do not hit ballistics gel at close range. That's dumb. We're going to 100 yards and 200 yards. We're going to start with the 118 grain XD. That stands for extreme defense. Oh, that looks like a hard hit. <laughs> You guys got to see the impact, not me. So you can tell me how big a mess it was. Ooh, okay. Oh, gorgeous. Yes. Okay, you can see the, uh, the cut. Oh, this is very interesting. All right, this is 10% gel. And it looks like it came in and didn't really start doing anything extreme. That's still a nasty cut right there. That's about a half inch wide as it enters. And then when it gets to about, oh, I don't know, two inches in, it looks like it started to tumble. I'm not sure. This could just be, well, probably not a tumble because the way that this works, it usually stays nose forward and goes in like a corkscrew, goes in like a propeller and uh, tears things up. So you can see that one leaf hanging out right at the top. Got another one down here. This is an ugly cavity. And look how long that goes, okay kind of goes dormant and then ends up in block number two. So that's 16 inches of gel right there. Add another, oh, five inches or so. So you're looking at about 21 inches of penetration. Very nice. I think that would work fine on hogs. Okay, so that's the heavy one. Let's see how the lightweight one does. I just had the safety fall right off. This isn't your, your average AR safety. This one is one of those ambi ones and it's held in place by a, uh, a tiny little screw here. Thankfully, I had my WARN tool. Uh, I told you guys about a while back, I've been carrying one of these around in my uh, range bag. Sometime I gotta show you guys all the stuff that's in my range bag, but this came in really handy today. Put my rifle back together. 
One cool thing about the Lehigh's here is that they seem to be feeding really well. I've had some issues with other bullets so far uh, trying to hand load these. Uh, for example, the Hornady XTPs. <laughs> You know, the gun did not like them. Maybe if I seated them a little bit longer somehow, which I might come around to trying sometime, but uh, it, they just kind of jammed up at the front of the mag. They would just slam into a wall. But uh, these guys, especially the 118s, these are feeding great. I had one issue with the, uh, the 90 grain, and that was my first uh, load in of the day. I had the, I think I had the bolt in the way at first. It might've pushed it down just a little bit, but since then it's been feeding all of them just fine. 90 grain XD. I see that I just clipped the edge. These have been coming in a bit left compared to the others. That's okay. We have two hits, but I'm gonna concentrate on this bottom one. All right, so this looks kind of similar to what we had before with the 118. It's taking about two, two and a half inches, and it is cutting a decent amount right there. Again, about a half inch wide, and then it suddenly flares. So we're probably getting up to about uh, one and a half inches wide at max. It's gonna be right about there. And this one actually settles down much quicker and takes a nose dive out, and that's it's kind of what's going on with this one too. This one's a little hard to see. Let's get over the top here. You can see where it comes in. This is actually a pretty wide cut, eh, a bit over a half inch maybe. Get the same sort of leaf. And then this one cuts a long, pretty straight channel and it flies out the side of uh, block number two. Overall, I'd say that I prefer the 118 that you see right here. This one seems to cut a more consistent, wide, damaging channel. Uh, this one is going to be very lethal. Uh, this is just a big mess. Some of these that we've seen, they flare very quickly and then settle down quickly, you know, in some of the other loads that we've tested. Some of them cut a consistent channel for a very long time, and this one seems to fit into that latter category. You guys can probably see the setting sun behind me. It means I gotta hurry. All right, let's go ahead and do the heavier one first, which means I have to load in the small and fast second. I'll have two rounds of each just in case. Okay, interesting thing about this, these two have the same point of impact vertically at 200 yards. I mean, they are pretty much identical. The only difference is one of them is hitting more to the right, the heavier one is. And that's gonna all depend on your rifle and your harmonics. This is the heavier one coming into the right. Check out that sunset, y'all. We get some good ones here in Oklahoma. All right, here is our cut. This actually looks very similar to what we had at 100 yards, and that's good. It looks like it does take almost twice as long to get to that cut. So we have about a half inch going through here. And then actually, this kind of looks like a tumble. Let's take a look from the top. Yeah, that's a tumble. So instead of a big expansion, this is kind of a two-dimensional cut. Wicked two-dimensional cut, but then here's another one. Looks like it maybe flips again. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. It's a little tough. These, these blocks are kind of dirty. 
There it is right there. Coming on back, and there is our bullet, which looks like it is, yep, it is facing backward. That's the 118. So that's the 118 at 200 yards. Now, I, I have had some trouble uh, getting the 90 on target. I don't have the drop exactly right yet, so I'm gonna take a couple more shots and see if I can do this. I'm really out of light, but hopefully we can continue to see. All right, this is it. I have two of the 90 grain ones left. So far at 100 yards, they've been printing on the left side. They've been coming in low and left. At 200 yards, I think there's about a one mil drop. I think that's it. And then they are, they should still be coming in left. <laughs> Two rounds to get it right. Ugh, wish me luck. <sighs> this scope still looks pretty darn good at this dusk kind of lighting. Good scope. <laughs> Okay, I hit the plate. Let's go see. Well, you win some, you lose some. That one ended up going low. And it's not because of any imprecision of the round itself. Uh, my scope mount was coming loose. Seems like all kinds of stuff was coming loose on there. Uh, the, the recoil on that rifle is actually pretty stout. We had somebody ask about that uh, in the comments, and I don't think I got to reply to him, but if you're curious about how uh, 350 Legend feels, uh, it looks pretty tame when I'm shooting here in the prone with that, that rest. The rest is kind of heavy and it absorbs a lot of that recoil. Uh, it doesn't actually make it back to me, but, um, and it's, it's actually not bad. The recoil uh, is, it's something you're going to feel, but it's nothing like a Magnum or anything like that. Uh, the only issue with that particular rifle is that uh, stock, the, the rip stock that comes on it, it doesn't have a rubber butt pad, and uh, so it hurts. After a few rounds of shooting, yeah, it just kind of, it digs that metal straight into your shoulder. Uh, so they do have some rubber pads, and I think I'm going to get one of those for that. It, uh, <laughs> it sucks. It really hurts. But yeah, I had the, uh, the scope mount come loose on there. I'm going to have to make sure that everything is torqued down. i got to just go through. This is a problem here on the channel. I need to, I'm swapping out scopes all the time, and I guess I, uh, I goofed up. I need to go back and uh, torque these things down again. But I think that we can expect that its performance to be pretty similar to what we saw before. It looks like the 118 turned in a very similar performance to what we had the first time around. Uh, just, you know, less, less of a cut, less wide. I think we can kind of expect the same sort of thing out of the 90. Uh, but yeah, both of them are pretty precise. We're going to take a look at the targets back over my shoulder here. Let's check these out. Okay, here's my cold shot up top. You can see uh, that was my very first shot of the day. Uh, <laughs> that feels good. It was right on target. Uh, the follow-up shots were a cluster, as you can see, quite a bit lower and a bit to the left. Uh, so when the gun is warm with this load, you can see where it strikes. And then uh, things were kind of the opposite with the 118. That lower left target, that was shot number one there on the left. And then I shot a four shot group on the right there. Now, I think that we can tighten up these groups quite a bit. Uh, I would say that overall, these are about uh, one and a half. Well, this one is a one and a half inch group, the top one. Uh, the bottom one, I would say is about a, a two inch group. I'm gonna exclude the flyers because those were when the barrel was cold. I shot that shot first, that shot second, and then I shot this group and that group. But I think that we can kind of say that uh, once warm, okay, that, that four shot right there is about an inch and a half, two inches, a little bit less than two inches, somewhere in there. And then this one's about a two inch group. This is how 350 Legend has been performing with pretty much everything that I've uh, shot through here. At best, it puts down about uh, two MOA. And I think that's just fine, really, for this kind of rifle. You're talking about closer distances, getting a heavy hit on a heavy animal that's going to be on the larger side. This is not a varmint or rifle. And as I've mentioned, we've had a lot of folks coming back with, uh, with reports of slain deer, ones that just dropped right in their tracks. And uh, yeah, I think we can continue to expect good things out of this cartridge. One thing that I think we can do to tighten up these groups is to use a precision scope, one that you can adjust the parallax on it. Uh, the, the TS6X and the TS8X are great scopes, wonderful for CQB type of stuff, and I think they'd be great for hogs and deer. But uh, I think for extreme precision and seeing how tightly you can get your groups, 
I, I think that we'd have to maybe look towards something like a uh, more of a varmint scope, something with higher magnification where I can see the impacts and something where I can adjust that parallax so it isn't drifting around uh, based on where my eye is. Thanks a lot for watching, y'all. It's been a beautiful night to come shoot, and I'm glad you could join me. Feels like it's getting down to about mid-50s right now. It's just gorgeous out here. Uh, I love January here in Oklahoma. January and February are just awesome. Great hiking weather. But uh, if you want to see any of the other videos that I've put together on 350 Legend load testing and you know hitting gel at 100 and 200 yards, I'll put a link to some of my playlists around here. Uh, so I'll put them in the sidebar or down in the description because uh, we have lots and lots of very interesting tests. You won't want to miss any of them. Thanks a lot to folks that have made videos like these possible, especially patrons of the Destructive Arts. Uh, we have a lot of folks that are chipping in a buck or two a month to help keep me in gel and powder and uh, all the good stuff. Stuff that makes tests like these possible. So thank you patrons at the 338 Lapua Magnum level we have Sportsman's Guide, Stan and Mary and Tyler and at the 300 Win Mag level we have Howard, Mr. No Name, Peter and Joseph Davis. Thanks a lot you guys, thanks to everybody. See y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video be sure to like, share and most importantly subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content go ahead and subscribe there's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the Destructive Arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.